today um, on behalf of the family of Porter Burks. Um, I file a $50 million lawsuit against um, four unknown police officers at the Detroit Police Department because the chief has failed to uh, provide the names of the officers who were involved in the execution-style killing of Porter Burks. Um, in fact, the chief, despite my request for him, to him directly to provide everything, the videos and everything involved in this case, this tragic case, to date, for the last two weeks, I've received nothing. Um, so we will obtain the names of the officers and fill them in later. But a complaint has been filed in the Wayne County Circuit Court. It takes approximately a day to go through the filing process now. So we have not yet been uh, notified as to the judge to whom we are assigned. Um, the complaint alleges under Michigan state law gross negligence in the execution of Porter Burks. It alleges assault and battery and it also alleges violation of the Disabilities Act relative to Porter's obvious and known disabilities uh, and the, uh, um, the abuse that he suffered at the hands of the police officers, uh, which was obviously directly related to his disability. I provided you also with the autopsy report that shows, as I indicated last time, um, that Porter was executed from long range. The autopsy report indicates no shots were fired in close range and that he was hit at least 19 times. He was executed by shots to the head, to the face, to the chest, to the arms, to the legs. It's just nonsense that this could occur in a civilized society when so many alternatives were available to the Detroit police officers to prevent this type of tragedy from occurring. Also, there's absolutely no excuse for the execution of Porter Burks under the facts and circumstances in this case. The Detroit police had a myriad of alternatives available other than executing him by firing squad. Those alternatives included staying in their cars. He was obviously harmless to them while they were in their cars. They sought him out, they provoked the confrontation, and they executed him without excuse. Also, again, let me point out that while the chief was very forthright with the press in coming forward and giving you edited videos. He has never provided those videos to the family, and we don't want an edited video of the execution. We want the full video so that the people of the state of Michigan, the people of the city of Detroit, the people of the United States can see what actually occurred in terms of the execution of Porter and the circumstances that occurred on that street in the early morning hours. Um, generally, these lawsuits take from one and a half to two years in the Wayne County system. We will obtain all of the videotapes as a result of subpoenas uh, to the Detroit Police Department. Like I said, despite our request, uh, they have not been forthcoming with any information. I mean zero information um, to me or the family. Um, we will obtain those tapes. I will provide them to you, the unedited tapes. Of course, you're aware that uh, the Detroit Police Department played to you edited tapes that ended as Porter held up his hands uh, and was being shot at long range. They stopped right there. And so the people of the state of Michigan get, don't get the full effect of the brutality and the unnecessity, if you will, of having shot him by firing squad on that Detroit street. So we'll provide that information to you as soon as I get it. Um, again, the autopsy report indicates the ridiculous number of times that Porter was shot by a firing squad. There's no justification for this. This is the definition of excessive force. 
there was absolutely no need to use deadly force in this confrontation. And nevertheless, it was used. I can't think of a, 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 of a situation which was obviously calling out for alternative means less than deadly force. And in fact, what happened here is the police used deadly force immediately and nothing else. Of course, we've been told that they talked to him. And as soon as apparently they didn't like talking to him anymore, they shot him 19 times. Um, there's really very little more that I can say with regard to this. This should never have happened. This, this, it should not happen again. Uh, this lawsuit hopefully will be a means to uh, 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 initiate change in the department. I, I believe that police officers shouldn't be responsible for caring for mentally ill people, but that you know, they should not be responding with deadly force to people who obviously are suffering mental health problems and can be dealt with in a myriad of other nonviolent and less deadly ways. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Um, Fox uh, says that it was unable to be uh, performed. I know. That's inexplicable to me. I've never seen that. I've handled uh, these cases now going on 45 years. And I can't imagine since they had uh, Porter why they felt that they didn't have enough fluids to do a toxicology, which is irrelevant to me that the facts of, the matter of this case do not involve any toxicology one way or the other. Um, in fact, Porter probably wasn't on sufficient medications uh, as is required by his disease. Um, but I, have never, I did note that I don't understand that. But I did tell you all that my uh, information is that Porter was brought after being shot now 19 times through the head, through the face. He was brought and dropped off at the Sinai Hospital, handcuffed behind his back with no explanation of what had happened to him. I want to stress that again. That's the information we have, that he was dropped off, handcuffed at the hospital, and no information was provided to the doctors at the scene as to what had occurred. But why you would handcuff a lifeless body if it's shot in the head and face is beyond me. In your experience in this type of situation, why would the department not provide you with anything? Usually because they lawyer up. They have the City of Detroit Law Department. They recognize that this is a, a horrendous case that is probably, in my opinion, not defensible in any way, shape, or form. And so um, the lawyers have told the city of Detroit to stonewall me until and unless they receive a subpoena, which they're going to receive. We did submit to them Freedom of Information Act requests. They have not uh, accorded us uh, that information as they're required to, and they've put us off for all this time. So I have no other uh, uh, conclusions to be drawn other than the fact that this is a stonewall process that is engaged in by, often, by people who have done something wrong and don't want to be forthcoming. If they were, if they felt, for instance, that it was, and I think that's a good question, that it was so defensible and they went out in the public and they gave you half a story and they gave you half a videotape and they tried to make it seem as if something other than what occurred actually occurred, why aren't they forthcoming with the rest of the story? Why aren't they forthcoming simply with the family themselves and myself as to our requests under the Freedom of Information Act? I can only conclude the reason is it's part of the Stonewall process. They make it as hard as possible to obtain the information. It's a little game that's played. I'll get the information, but it's a game that's played regularly by wrongdoers. There have been weeks of protests uh, in regards where they're demanding the names of these officers. Talk to us about the significance of those names being released. To you. Well, the fact is, I don't have the names myself. I've asked Chief White for the names. I'm filing this under a John, what we call a John Doe complaint because they have not provided the names of the officers who have been engaged in the execution of, uh, of Porter. Uh, we've filed Freedom of Information Act requests. They have not responded to that. 
will now subpoena them. We've sued them under the Michigan Freedom of Information Act, as you can see in the complaint. Um, and we will obtain those names. There's no reason not to obtain those names. Uh, you will note that in uh, Grand Rapids, for instance, it took quite a while before the Grand Rapids Police Department uh, revealed the name of the officer who had killed that young man and shot him in the back of the head, who's now been indicted for murder. Um, that's just, uh, I guess, common practice for the departments not to release, it, it, it's not acceptable, but it's common practice to try to keep the names and identities of the officers who engaged in this type of activity secret. But they will be known. That will be determined. Yes, ma'am? Have you been told if they're still placed on administrative leave, these officers? We haven't been told anything. Literally, we've been stonewalled. We've submitted a Freedom of Information Act request long ago to give us all the information. They've stonewalled us. Uh, they've provided nothing. Um, now we filed the suit. We also have subpoena power. So we'll get, in addition to requesting it amicably under the Act, we'll get subpoena power and they'll have to provide it to us. They'll have to at some point. They may fight us, but they'll have to. Uh, Jeff, one of the reasons this was delayed was because you had to get the um, probate taken care of. That's correct. The autopsy, um, Kiana has been appointed the personal representative of Our the question, estate. If I, could, if I could jump in on the sure. group. Um, it, this sounds like pretty severe mental illness. Was there ever any attempt by anybody in the family to become his guardian then so that they could take care of him? They are his guardians. He's, he's by law. I'm forgive me, he's my ignorant here. No, so no. Why, was, there, was anyone his legal guardian? Yes, his term? mother is his legal guardian. You don't have to petition the court for a, a, a child. Uh, uh, to, who lives in your home to be the legal guardian, you will be accepted as a legal guardian. There is nothing that could happen or that wouldn't happen or any treatment that would have or would not have been provided uh, if anybody in the family had petitioned uh, uh, to be his guardian. Now, I really think what you're in Michigan, other than a very short involuntary commitment proceeding, which you can obtain um, by petitioning the court for an involuntary commitment. It's a very short period of time. I've tried to emphasize to you that there is no realistic mechanism in this state because of the defending, de defunding. Okay, people are talking about defunding the police. I'm telling you, okay, and I ran for governor of this state in 1998. The state of Michigan defunded mental health. Defunded mental health. Let me repeat it to you. Everybody's up in arms about defunding the police. I don't believe in defunding the police, but they did defund mental health. There is no such thing as effective provision of mental health services in the state of Michigan. God help you if you are suffering from the disease for instance, Porter was suffering from, which was schizophrenia or uh, bipolar disease that produces these type of, uh, of psychotic events. God help you in terms of the treatment that you can receive. Michigan and many other states have defunded mental health. So the people are left to their own devices. The amount of money and the amount of services available are nil. And so a, 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 a Formal guardianship wouldn't have served, nor, nor, nor would it have changed anything in terms of the care that was provided to him or anything like that. So that, I just, I'm in the process. He, she, he needed to be made formal guardian to file a lawsuit, but in order to, once he's 18, you don't have to be formal guardian if it's your kid to get medical treatment for him and stuff? You have to be call, uh, made the personal representative to file a wrongful death Okay. case, and that's what this case is. This is called a wrongful death case, right. and you do need to be appointed by the court to be a, appointed the personal representative. You don't need to uh, have formal guardianship to care for your mentally ill son or child. You do have a problem in this state because mental illness and mental treatment has been defunded totally.
Any other questions? Last one. It says 20 here, and everybody's been reporting 22. He was 20 years old, correct? Yes. Okay. I believe so. I just want to make sure I'm. The $50 million you guys are seeking, does that include punitive damages, or are you seeking damages? No, in Michigan, we're not permitted to file punitive damage claims. However, if we file, and we may choose to after we obtain all the information, if we file a federal civil rights case, we have not filed that yet. We have filed under, under Michigan law. I want to make that clear. We have prepared, and we're ready to file a federal civil rights case also. Uh, that would be filed in the federal district court. Under that law, the federal 1983 Civil Rights Act, you're entitled to seek punitive damages. However, we have chosen to file this first to get all the information under the state proceedings and then make a decision to, uh, or whether or not, to file a federal civil rights act. Jeff, can you elaborate, please, in regard to what they should have done? The chief has said they followed crisis intervention. I've seen you quoted as saying they were forced to other way. Yeah. What other options are you referring to? Look, 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 I'm a layman. I'm not a law enforcement officer. But as a lay person, the police was, for, or, or, or Chief uh, uh, White was uh, uh, very adamant about the fact that they followed procedures and they uh, um, did whatever they were trained. The only thing that I could observe on the videotape was an officer reaching out his hand and uh, um, uh, talking to Porter. Uh, and that was the extent of the quote unquote de escalation proceedings before they shot him dead at long distance. For instance, none of the officers had to get out of a car. He couldn't and he did not present a danger to any officer or any person if they were in a car. Officers also have body armor. They use it all the time in prisons. Prisoners, in, in, prisoners have been known to make uh, homemade knives in prisons. They don't shoot down prisoners in the prison system. They go in with body armor because knives can't pierce body armor. There are, they have tactical uh, tanks that can go up to people while you're in a tank. If, if you felt it was that dangerous, this sounds ridiculous that, that we're talking about a child with a knife, but you could have done that. Um, you could have shot him with a tranquilizer, like we would have done if this was a wild animal. We would have shot a tiger or a lion that had escaped from the zoo with a tranquilizer. Instead, a child who is known to be mentally ill, they knew he was mentally ill, they execute him with 20 shots to the head and the face and to the abdomen. That's, it, you don't even need to be a police officer to understand. There must have been a thousand different things that could have been done other than shooting him. And the one and only thing they did was, I see a video where a man's holding out his hand and then they shoot him. Unless you're just plain dumb or you're willing to justify anything police do, that doesn't look right to me. That just If you just use common sense here, what's that all about? You knew he was sick. The family had told you you'd have experience. You knew it. Why shoot him? Why? Don't tell me that, you, that he threatened you. You didn't have to be threatened. Don't get out of your car. Then what can he do? Nothing. Nothing. We've defunded mental illness, folks. That's why this happened. We leave it to the police. That's why this happened. It happens way too often. I was asked the last occasion I was here, what would I say to families if they're having a mental health crisis? Should they call the police, which is the only people they can call? And my answer is no, because more likely than not, because the police are trained to use weapons and they're not trained to intercede with mental illness, your loved one is likely to get killed. So if I had a child, God forbid, that had the type of mental illness that Porter had, I would think 50 times before I called the police because my child would likely be the, the victim of, of what happened to Porter Burks and that's happened 
far too many occasions in this state, far too many. Anybody else have any questions? I did have one last one, Senator. Forgive my ignorance for not having covered this previously. Who called the police? The family called the police? Yes, the family so called the police. Like and the family uh, 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 explained to the police uh, that Porter had uh, a previous uh, 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 contacts with the police, that he was mentally ill, that he had a knife, and that he was uh, not being allowed to come to his house uh, because they were concerned about the weapon. A knife, and the knife, again, is a uh, pocket knife. It is not a seven-inch blade, as the police tried to explain to you. It's got about a three-and-a-half-inch blade, and it does fold. Um, so the police were fully informed that he was in need of mental health, that he had mental health problems, and the chief doesn't, doesn't uh, deny that. But why you resort to a firing squad after uh, holding up your hand is, is, is beyond me. Uh, none of this case, in terms of the police actions, makes sense. Um, this case is, is taking place because this should never have happened. You, if, 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 if in our society we don't understand that you don't shoot sick people 19 times in the head and the face um, when they're having a psychotic break and when there's a thousand, I, I'm exaggerating, but a handful of other nonviolent means in order to deal with him, um, then we've lost our way as a society. Um, and uh, this is not the society that I think uh, civilized people uh, should, should support. Um, our society should be far more uh, enlightened in terms of mental illness. Thank you very much. <laughs>